and hello my friends and welcome welcome to life expansion i'm jason stevenson and thank you very much for joining me on this very special day today for my friends and welcome and i'll just welcome. wipe that down um i have a most beautiful guest with me today and i'm so glad that uh christina hill is here and i'd like to just give you a bit of a rundown on christina christina is a power psychic a celebrity coach and a world-renowned channeler for Othella. And uh, Othella's mission is to help heal humanity or to help humans heal themselves. And mm -hmm. Christina is the world's first channeler to ever appear in Carnegie Hall, New York City, just last year. And I'm going to be speaking to her about that because that's a uh, that's something that many people dream about. So, um, but she's been featured in, in films, documentaries, and also been studied by doctors and quantum physicists and with appearances on national TV and radio, has traveled the world as highly sought after as a spiritual coach and a channel for light. And with that beautiful introduction, I say, <laughs> Christina Hill, thank you so much for being here. And it's an absolute honor to have you on the show live oh. across the world today. Thank you so I much. I just feel that. Yes, <laughs> that's a burst of light. Thank you. And thank you for all who are joining us. And this dance of light, it's just right. So if you're hearing it, this is for you. It's right here, right now. It's so fresh. How are you today, Jason? I'm doing pretty well, Christina. I'm doing very well. I'm very excited to hear and to learn and to be with yourself and the fella during these next few moments. And of course, to all the people on the live, uh, I'm just going to see, I don't know if we have live chat. I'm just going to check that out. Yes, we do. We do. Fantastic. Whoa, that's me. This is a first for me, guys. So I, I'm like, uh, I'm still a little bit in the dinosaur age on the technology end. So this so, is great that we can have this interactive uh, dynamic going on. Yeah. yeah. So we've got, there's Ali O'Shea here and Gret and Zoe Sullivan, uh, Carolyn D'Souza. Hello, Joelle, Nell. And all, welcome all. It's lovely to see you all here. And Love and light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so, Christina, just uh, as a coming from a performer and being a performer and a singer myself and, and enjoying singing, you know, it's many performers' dream to be able to perform at Carnegie City Hall in New York. And sure. I just want to ask you about that adventure because that adventure was only last year. Yes, it was in November. Yes. So and how, how was that? And what happened there? What was going on there? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's one of a kind. This uh, meditation concert manifesto was it, it was just coming together a lot of uh, world class musicians. So Earth, Wind and Fire, right? Myron McKinley of Earth, Wind and Fire there. Uh, we had one of the drummers, the Jackson Five, a guitarist, plays for Willie Nelson, joined us on stage. And of course, headed up uh, as like the circus master of it all is Michel Pascal, and he's the co-author to the Dalai Lama, amongst many, many other accomplishments. So he brought all of this tour de force under one roof in a packed auditorium, uh, sold out. And for the purpose of bringing and, and really fusing, here's the fusion, it's the music, the meditation, and presence, mm. right? Yes. And, and then there's this woman, right, who shows up, who's the channel for Othella, <laughs> and, uh, and brings in like a whole nother intergalactic <laughs> level, right? Can you imagine it? <laughs> so, this is this is a very prestigious hall where it's like very classical, um, very very formal. There are a lot of rules, you know, and and um, yeah, and world world class, just top top grade, top shelf. My so God. when we all came together, it was this. The best way to say is an explosion of energy, and in the container of presence. My um, stepping in, I, I just, I thought of you, Jason, as I said, when I was up there and we were doing some channeling, I was just like, wow, if Jason were here too, I could feel and sense that your voice coming through because of your meditations, because everyone knows that voice, right? Mm -hmm. Your voice. 
I, I feel would have fit so well in that in that scene. You know? the, the audience, though, they joined us in this expedition. We closed their eyes. Imagine it. I mean, it's like a full house of people just closing their eyes and going deep. And Othello guided uh, these people through a meditation to become a dolphin. Oh, and we swam, we swam deep, right, to learn that at the truly at the bottom of our minds, Mm. There is a, a reservoir of peace, and and we touch that. We touch that. Wow, and that's that's pretty magnificent. Like with that, with that energy, and that many people coming together and being yeah. present in that moment, I could yes. imagine the the vibrational energy of that room would have been <sighs> like blown the roof off. Correct. Yes, yes that's my. <laughs> Right. Blow, blow the sky high. Yes. Wow. I, I feel light was served and that uh, there, there were many awakenings, illuminations, and, and you could really feel it. Just peace. Peace. Yeah. And so we, we took that uh, to an exponential level just by taking Othella inside at that venue, really, allowing for uh, Othella to be, she, you know, but shine the light right mm -hmm. and then but to not call it channeling because in that in that scenario it, it was asked of us to, to to not use that word so here i am publicly i'm finally able to say yeah we were the first the world's first channeler to present at carnegie hall and and that uh, it's that that's a benchmark i i feel in the world of channeling and it was deeply Absolutely. moving and honor just an honor to to serve othella in this way and uh, thank you for asking. It was something that we're talking about now. It's an event in the past and we're in the here and now. And it's yeah. so yeah. it's so wonderful. But w w unfortunately, I can't share the, the film. We we're not allowed to film in that building, right? Oh, so you, no. you had to be there live for it. And we'll be doing those continuously. We were invited to come back next year. To awesome. <laughs> and and you know, do you know, Chris, Christina, that has a beauty about it of not being able to film also because I think at the moment we're getting so tied up in wanting to capture things on camera and which yes. really does shift us away from being actually present in that moment. So yes. in a way what's happened is the people that experience that have, have this beauty captured within their hearts and that's, <sighs> That's the beautiful thing, you know, and it'll live yeah. on forever. They, we don't right. need the we don't need the footage to prove or to say we've been there or anything like that. I guess. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, so allowing yourself to be, mm. and it, it's so easy when we're in a venue like that, when we're in a concert like that, and we're called to come home. Mm. And I was very, I was very happy also to see people were putting their phones down. Mm. And just, yeah, just right. opening up, and so it was. It was a, a phenomenal opening um, that I again feel served Othello well and created a, a heightened level of light uh, for those in the audience. And I'm very, very honored. Beautiful. Every time we appear somewhere or there's a new experience, um, new opportunity, I, I have to say, I say it a lot. I feel honored, really, really deeply honored to be a part of it. Yeah. Mm. So let's just go back in time now. I'd like to know, um, as Christina Hill, when did you first discover that you had abilities to help and to heal others? When I was five years old, I was sitting in kindergarten and everyone was drawing around me. And the things I was drawing was how I helped at the time my grandmama, who was hooked up to a bunch of tubing, how I helped her to pass out of her body and help her to leave because she asked me to. And she, she wasn't able to speak. Oh my. Um, so I, you know, my adoptive parents in, in their limited understanding took me to these places quite often, hospitals, funeral homes and things. And when I was in front of someone in their suffering, deep suffering, you know, I would go to them and I knew the procedure, I knew how to help them to journey on their way. And so I drew a picture of that at kindergarten. And um, 
that was when I started to look around at my peers and I started to say, there's something different here. I really believe there's something different about me or something that, you know, do you see them too? And I would, I would say that to, to, to mm. my friends. So mm. I could, from a very early age, feel and hear and see what is not in this physical realm. Mm. And it was so normal to me, I couldn't help but talk about it because in our innocence, you know, we just say, it just comes right out because yeah. we're children, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so it never ever occurred to me that there was something wrong with this until the people that were around me informed me um, and tried to train me out of it, really. They told me that this is something that causes damnation, that you're eternally damned. And so I was brought up in this environment of heavy religious you know, fire and brimstone. I think a lot of psychics can identify with this story. It's, this is not a common. Uh, but so for me, it started though definitively at five where I, I just, I started to um, sense that there, this is not happening to everyone else. This is, this is something unique to me. And that if I'm going to survive this, then I have to figure out a way to keep this under the rug or keep it quiet. Mm, because see. every time there was a new experience and I had many, I'm right around seven years old, I jumped in a, uh, I found a way to make a ride to get over to uh, this person's house, but I had a dream about a little girl that passed out of her body. She was on the beach and her parents were indeed suffering. And she guided me with directions and everything, how to get to their house. I ended up in these strangers home talking oh. to them about this. And um, finally the, the police came, got me, they had been looking for me and then took me back to my caregiver's home. Um, but see, as, as we get older, right? We develop even more of these gifts. We want to, it just wants to come up, right? Mm -hmm. Consciousness wants to express. And so finally though, right around later on in life, I, I, I decided to throw in the towel and I just stopped. I just, I, I turned it off. I, I decided to protect myself is just in my own best interest that saying these things, meeting these people um, or acting upon these things was only to my own suffering. It would only cause mm -hmm. more suffering for myself. So I decided to, yeah, to create coping strategies to help myself through. Mm, so that's, that's, that's a, a long-winded version, but that no, is no. That, <laughs> yeah, that was going to be that was going to be my next question actually about you know that that when people were telling you it was the wrong thing to do and you know damnation and all that thing like what. How did you cope with that? And uh, but you've kind of answered that, so you put it under the rug, yes, quite probably for quite some time, right? Yes, and I'm really kind of putting um, putting icing on the cake here because it, there was I, I grew up in a very abusive home. There was violence involved in this, so mm -hmm. I I just learned that if there's certain behaviors that I exhibit, it results in a beating. Period. Mm -hmm. So oh, wow. I I just uh -huh. know. Okay, even though I really, really felt compelled and sometimes I just couldn't help myself. I'm in the market, I see something, I see a woman whose child is in their soul walking next to their mother and is wanting to say something, even throws a little thing of yogurt off the shelf and off goes flying yogurt all over the, and people are like, what's going on? These were like daily occurrences. And at that point I would walk to the mother and say, hey, did you know that that, your little kiddo doing that mischief right there oh, and wow. say you know i love you and mommy it's okay and you know put put your pills away stop stop crying you know everything's fine um but for for the normal i have to get this right am i trying to say this for that for most people that is so freakish and outlandish and you just don't you just don't of, do this of course <laughs> of course <laughs> Of course, if I could only imagine, you know, if I was there at a shopping center saying that to someone, they'd go, what on earth are you speaking about? Yeah. Yes. Mm. And yet I've also had, so this is for all those people who maybe have had similar experiences and they're going, okay, should I say something? Mm. I've had beautiful experiences too. Beautiful where, where people, when they hear the information, coming from a deceased relative, some, someone who's passed into uh, the higher consciousness to connect and make that connection. 
and they immediately feel, they get it and they feel that it's real and they're like, wow. And they'll say something or they'll release, they'll cry. And then the release is like, it's, it's a done deal and they can move on with their lives. And that's happened many, many times too. So I, I think it's a win-win. And now Athela does a great thing. She gives me kind of a green light for, yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> and then for a red light, it's like, a, no, don't, don't even go there. So it's a good system that I had to learn. You know, a lot of this stuff you learn as you go. So yeah. Anyone who has yeah. this and is listening in, you know, I, I would say continue to do trial by trial and error. And then um, feel your own intuition in these moments. And, and you'll get it. You'll know when it's your time to maybe speak up. or, Yeah. And, and I certainly had to learn through some, some pretty hard knocks. But I, I finally got it. <laughs> I, I really enjoy that idea about a fella giving you the, the, the red or green light. So you, you're tuning in even before anything begins. Uh, and and just knowing, okay, what is the the right thing to do now? And and the fella jumping in and just giving you that, and that's a that's so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and just while we we're here now, I'd just like to check in on the chat and just see if there's how how things are going here. And there's some I know. Colleen says trying hard to develop my psychic abilities. Uh, so we, we might have some things to, to talk about that. I'm sure Christina has some things to say there. Absolutely. Yeah. It's beautiful to acknowledge that you're wanting to develop the gifts and acknowledge that you have them. Beautiful. I mean, that in of itself is going to kickstart and everything that you need is going to come to you. So just keep that intention. I'm developing my psychic gifts. There's a living affirmation right there. I'm developing my psychic gifts. Everything that you need is going to come to you for that development. Love that. I love how life sets us up, right? Am I right, Jason? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so, Christina, would you say that this is accessible to everyone? What do you think about that? Ego would love to say no, because there's this pedal system, like I'm going to be on a pedestal and I am the light channel, the channel for light. Sure. And, <laughs> you know, and, and you all other humans, you know, you, you can give it a try, but you'll never, <laughs> never be, right? Like that's direct, I've heard this before from people too. I am a direct channel of god light i am the god's light in, embodied and all of these i'm not poking fun i'm just simply saying ego would love to an ego will have a heyday with that mm. when really the the truth is our dog channels you know you channel i channel the children channel we're, we're all channeling we are all capable and we do we do it already so how we choose to develop it, and we have, we have someone chatting about that now. How do I develop? Um, how we choose to develop it, just like any other muscle, is within our control. We can develop that muscle and get it super strong, super powerful, and have it be a 24-7 type of a deal. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. And we, we do. There are, for example, in my case, is like a day in, I channel, I'm channeling about six hours a day, seven hours a day sometimes. And that's just my, my normal rhythm and flow of my days. And uh, if you wanted to develop that to that level, you absolutely could. Mm. So there are certain exercises and techniques that we've seen historically that will um, blossom and grow uh, this, this channeling muscle, this feature that we're all hooked up with. And Jason, I, I'd love for you to speak a little bit about this too, about your beautiful connection with David amongst yeah. Yeah. many others and how that's become a very present fixture in your life. Not just something that's like fantastical that we think about every now and again, but rather a guiding force in, in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And I will say that I, I believe I connected with David when, when I was going through troubled times, probably in my early 20s yes. and at that point in time i remember thinking that uh, david was a um an imaginary friend yeah 
And I would often, whatever I was doing, wherever I was, uh, I remember just being able to call on him and he was just there in an instant. And he would listen to me and he would hear me out and there'd be just, he'd be just throwing in words occasionally. And I think it was just the presence of him being there and knowing that I was safe and all was going to be okay. Wow. And now I, after that dark time, I'd really kind of forgotten about David and just sort of pushed it all aside and just thought maybe that's a part of my life that was just, maybe I was losing it, right? <laughs> and, love uh, that phrase, losing it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. losing, losing it can be a beautiful thing, right? You know? Oh, totally, totally, yes. <laughs> and so Go then I... Lose it. Go out and lose it, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Identity dissolve completely and lose it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it wasn't until I come back and I connected with you and I did your course and I did the first part of your course. I just started the first, it was free at the time. I'm not sure if it's available now. It, could... it still is. Yeah. I'm so thankful too. So thankful that you did that because right after that, the experience, I think it catapulted you into other things. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's when then David came back and I'm like, my goodness. Okay. Wow. And so then I ended up recording some meditations through David. And that was the first time I'd ever done anything like that, where I truly trusted this beautiful source and I just allowed him to, to flow through me. Um, mm. So, you know, I'm forever grateful for that. And I know that um, you can go to it's a, a fella.org yes. and I will be putting that up later. I can't seem to chat here now, but I will put that up later. Thank you. So uh, I'm just going to see if I can chat here. And fella.org is a t h e l l a dot org. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it's really well worth giving it a go. <sighs> what comes up for you? Because it was it's created magic for me. And although I don't, uh, I I can honestly say, you know, I don't connect with David every single day. Mm -hmm. I know that he's always there. Yeah, connected with him just before this interview. And just to, to be to be there and to be in the guiding light and and yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So I thank you for that because yes. you sharing your gift has has given me that back. Yes, I I really like the fact that you mentioned imaginary friend as as a start. Uh, yeah, in that in that sense, do what what feels right to you, whether. You know, because we're talking about how do I channel my guides, right? Because I, you know, I hear that a lot. How do I get in touch with this other realm and, and know them? And maybe not a daily thing, but but at least that I know that they're there and that I have some kind of tethering system, some kind of like calling system. Mm. I feel that starting with imaginary friend, whatever comes to you, go back to childhood if you need to. And think about those imaginary friends or think about the things where you just felt yourself in a state of pure joy. And mm. what were you doing? Mm. Maybe you were holding a rock in your hand, right? Mm. And maybe it's the ocean. Or maybe it's the sound of dolphins. Or maybe it's music itself. Our guides will move 50 steps in as you simply decide that you're going to connect that you're looking for them, that you're desiring a connection. It's like a, and they zoom right on in as you do that. And, and we release the attachment that it's gonna come in any which way, or that, it, that the expectancy energy that it's gonna create this, that, or this result. We, we let go of all that. And we just decide that it's going to be a beautiful experience correct divine order and sequence when it comes and that we will recognize it as imaginary friend you know or maybe the iguana or maybe it's you know it could be anything but those signs are gonna help your body there's something that goes off in our bodies when our guides are around us and if you're quiet you can feel it you can feel those signals and it's a, it's a very happy pleasant feeling it's a peace feeling or sometimes it's energizing, elevating. It's different for every person, which is why it's good to explore. 
the course that you took on our website, oh. the first part of it is basically just that. We just explore what it feels like, you know, and open ourselves up to receive those signals. And, and we allow universe to do the rest. Mm. I have to say right at this point, energy, uh, your energy, Christina, is absolutely, it's off the planet and I can feel it all the way here in Australia. I'm, I'm truly, I'm telling you the truth. It's uh, you're, you're a divine energy. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Look, you know, in regards to Othello, what do you think that, what, what, what is she coming here for now? What's her core message to, to all of humanity at this point in time? Mm -hmm. Othello is here. Yeah, yeah. And Othello is, she's just a tell it like it is. She's a rock star, a being from Sirius. That's, if you imagine a, a blue light, right? Or you can even imagine a dolphin, you know? And you can imagine that this being is here on the planet for a while to help us to heal ourselves. I mean, that's really what she's all about. And she'll tell you straight out. It's like, you humans need help. You need help to feel good, mm. right? To feel yeah. peace. It's just so simple. The suffering that goes on, the majority of it is useless and unnecessary. Yes. So we now have these dynamite supermasters that are coming in in all directions, and Othello is one of them, to help aid, aid relief, and some education about how we can live in a high vibrational state, or as Othello calls it, be an upgraded human. Upgraded. Mm. <laughs> upgraded human. Upgraded. I like that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so it's, for Othello, it starts with, uh, with the mind-body. And as she says, you know, all the magic tricks that sometimes people ask her to do fantastical things uh, or where they want a lot of information, you know, past lives and astral travel and aliens and all this kind of thing. And what she says is that we need to go back to the basics. Healthy body and the original divine blueprint of health. Mm healthy mental world on the inside and the realization of self, the I am. And then of course, the connections to our community, our brothers and sisters in our planet. And once all, once all that is in sync, then we can go and we can start, you know, moving chairs and, you know, doing, doing all the, the magic tricks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, and start to, to have fun with this and play with the forms and the energy and, and transmute and shift. Shape shifting, but uh, that it's I, yeah, I it's like not, not so much for yeah, right. It's, it's like it's not so much for entertainment mm. as it is for let's get let's get healed, let's be healthy, and mm. then then we then we go on to the the super cool stuff, the exciting of course. stuff. I mean, it makes sense because right. because we've lost the basics, haven't we? We've lost healthy eating. Uh, we've lost yeah. you know that we've lost peace of mind with being able to be so easily distracted with technology. You know, technology is a beautiful thing, but it also can be on the other side of the scale. It can be a yes. curse, you know. So I get that message that she's, let's just go back, you know, get grounded. Yeah, get grounded. Mm. That's right. Mm. Yeah. As the world speeds up, we have the potentials then to slow down. Mm. And we can, we can yeah, connect in a way and, and we have all the plumbing is there. We have all the ways to connect to our guides and to universe to allow health to spring forth and just not just physical health, but also mental health. Mm -hmm. the, the one mm -hmm. epidemic Othello talks a lot about is this insanity in the mind, this inability to detach from thoughts or to stop thinking. It's like that alone, like the supreme addiction. I think everyone can relate to this the, 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 all the time. And all of that. Slow it down. Mm. Mm. So we, we can balance um, between being in the, the world, 
the, the matrix world and also having one foot with our guides in the outer realm. Mm. Yeah. So, and, and I'm so thankful just by the way, for everyone, I can feel everyone that's tuned into this right now. This is uh, wonderful to have you here and thank you for looking inside of you, listening to these words and being in this energy field. Yeah, and the, the chat, I'm seeing the chat moving up, you know, it's it's continuing up. So, uh, and uh, yeah, there's a few people that have done the course saying they can recommend it. And um, so, yeah, there's some beautiful oh, things going on there at the moment. And magnificent. Any, any one of my listeners at the moment that might have some skepticism about about Othello and, and channeling, what would you mm-hmm. what would you say about that? I'd like to have Othello answer that actually. Beautiful. Who, who better than the boss, right? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Take it to the CEO. Yes. Let's make contact with Othello, who's always here anyway. But um, give me a moment. We'll go online with Othello. Sure. Right. <laughs> This vessel has still not yet been able to open the eyes and speak. We are working on this. Christina's next task is to open her eyes and allow the channeling mechanism to flow. It's coming. How are you all? Back behind the words of Othello is a distinct energy. It is a blue ray light, Syrian. It is a calling card. You can feel it. Let go of the judgments and feel. Feel for yourself. That is your answer. If it does not resonate or vibrate through the heart chamber, your Merkaba starts to spin. If it does not feel good, move on and find what does. For Athela wants to befriend you Shake your hand and help you along the way. That is all. Help yourselves to help yourselves. For now, it seems humans are more comfortable seeing a beautiful vessel while the channeling is occurring. Rather than the blue ray light, You are looking at the physical body, but do not be fooled. There is an Othello energy that is coursing through this and manipulating voice box. And it works well for now. The purpose of all of this, why Othello is here, to settle your hyperactive brain and to calm the central nervous system. You are safe. You are loved. No matter what happens, you are the eternal soul to roam. And you keep going on. I am also available to answer your questions so that you can free yourself and identify your points of suffering. This is your classroom. You are learning here. 
each student before it graduates must learn the lessons. I am but one of many that are here to be the gentle hand that rubs your back and says, it's okay, you're doing good, relax, rest. What you put in your mouth will help you to feel better if it is light foods. When you sleep, the sounds you hear, they can soothe you and should be affirming positive truths so that you are sleeping on the pillow of truth. Remove violence from your eyes and come away from electronics every day. Be in nature. These are a few of the lessons Othella encourages for humans. You are encouraged, yet always with your own individualized free will. To feel, to feel this energy is enough. David, please sing your song. Love. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, yeah, that's answered the question. Mm. Thank you. With humility, I say to all of you, whatever you feel, hits you inside here, then that's for you. And you can take what you like and chuck the rest. Mm. So we're all here. Sincerely, we are all here to feel love. Yeah. Mm. And I think... Uh, Many of my the tribe that are on YouTube right at this moment have heard um, that my grandfather's last words before he passed on, and I believe I've told you this, Christina. Um, you know, and he, he said to my mother before he died, his final words were love, and isn't that what it's all about? And I feel like he's given me, and just hearing that has given me the flame to be here. And uh, with the help of David, um, for me to probably acknowledge David even more so, um, because the more I acknowledge David, um, That's right. the greater yeah. that, that can grow. That's it. Yes. <sighs> mm. Your father's last words 
My I feel the channel. Yes, yes. Your grandfather's last words coming through in a channeled. I mean, that that's absolutely amazing to mm. be able to chant that, channel that, mm. bring that up, and then say, ah, I want to invite my guides to be more present in my world. Mm. It's just like when we you know, sit in our meditations and then we start to notice after a while, it becomes our rhythm of our life becomes changed and different. We're different people when we meditate in this way every day. Yes. And I will tell you, Christina, the chat is being filled with uh, so much, so much love. And <laughs> it's just amazing what I've seen there. It's just, thank you very much for sharing everyone. I'm, I'm so glad that you've been able to, to be here on this live chat and, um, I will no doubt, I, I can't seem to answer for some reason at the moment, but I will no doubt go through this and uh, I'm sure Christina will too. Yes. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been, you know, it's been an absolute joy to speak with you, Christina, and to speak with Othella. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I would like to ask you if you would be available some other time to come back again, you know, in the, the, over the coming months and if you have time it would be an absolute honor to have you back here we we would be divinely honored and i would love it to 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 come in a regular way so that people can use this as a springboard their own learning um i mean learning we're all teaching ourselves we're all the teachers right yes. but that we feel we this is approachable everyone and that we have a way uh, to have a sounding board a safe place for this to unfold so i would love to be here whenever you would care to invite me through this dance of energy absolutely Sincere wonderful priority. thank you absolutely yes. wonderful yeah well that's on you're you're taken up on that <laughs> yes <laughs> life says yes <laughs> And we are, we just did a film too. It, there's a film on our website at othello.org. It's called Tuning In Angels and Aliens. Um, that's, that's another way that you can just invite your guides. It's like watch more material, right? Where people are channeling. I find the more we channel, the more we see that material, it becomes more animated in our own experience. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually filming, I'm going to LA tomorrow to film a documentary about the, the story, which is not the identity, but it's the story of my life and how I actually met Othello, the events leading up to. And that's going to be coming out in mid-February. It's called Everyone Can Change. Wow, how beautiful. I can't wait to hear more about that and, more, and see that when it comes Thank out. Thank you. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's just, it's so true. It's like when we're in spiritual leadership, Jason, I know you identify with this. It's so important that we are humble and that we, we really do. Um, we, we are all one. We really do hold that authenticity, that humility mm. and um, that we, we make ourselves available. So I, I again, I would love to make all the all the material here that we're talking about is all free. It's it's available to everyone, mm -hmm. and uh, this this interaction here, Jason, is wonderful format, wonderful platform for everyone to join in and feel this this love hug, right? Feel the love coming in. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I've 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 felt the energy myself and I, I just I love it. And I know that uh, you know when I just glance at the chat and I see all the beautiful comments. Um, you know, Colleen says congratulations on your documentary. Where can we see it? Colleen, thank you so much. It is going to be on YouTube on our channel, Athella what is our YouTube channel? My staff is going to pinch me because I don't know that. <laughs> but, uh, it's Othella. I think it's Othella.org. We have, we have a YouTube channel. Okay. It's going to be on that. I'll put, I'll, put, I'll put the link in for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it for sure will be on our website. That's, that's the place to go for the free channeling course. If you want to chat with Othella, there's a free 10 minute call. You can even get on the phone with me. For 10 minutes and i'll just you know and we'll go right into it right we wow. can get a lot done in 10 minutes 
spirit knows no limits. So we can go deep and fast with spirit in 10 minutes. And the documentary will be on our website, afella.org. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Thank you so much, Christina, <laughs> once again. <laughs> it's been so good, so, so good. And Thank you, Adela. This I, energy is yeah. electric. Yeah. Thank you, Adela. And also just thank you for, for sharing the love because you have made my job as being the first time ever interviewed on live, which I was oh. to say I've been nervous about. And you've Congratulations. Just such an ease for me. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's really cool. That is very cool. Congratulations, Jason. You did it without a hitch. Awesome. Perfect. Flawless. I would and, say. and to all the people that have tuned in and those that are on the on the live chat now, I thank you very much for tuning in. It's it's so good to see thank these you. messages and, and for the ones on replay. Uh, you can catch this energy just as perfectly yeah. then as you know there's no yeah. open your arms up wide this energy is for you we are here for you we love you we love you we love you we're in love with you take all this energy put it into your life give it to your loved ones let's literally let's spread the love that's what we need we need more love we need more peace I see a comment you know thank you all jason christina and Bella. what an honor uh, there's just lots of beautiful comments. So, uh, yeah. Raising the standards. I love that. Raising the vibrational standards, right? Because we're living our lives like this and um, everyone is doing it. Everyone that's joined us, you're raising, elevating that consciousness. So thank you. Thank you to all of you. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with that, I say uh, much love to all of you and... and uh, <laughs> Have a beautiful evening or day ahead and hope to see you again next week. And I have no doubt that uh, Christina and Othello will be back here again uh, to yes. share some love. So thanks so much and um, many blessings to you all. And thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thanks, Othello. High five to Othello. Yes. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> thank you all. Be here and now and love. Um, love and light always. Thank you. Goodbye all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.